lady. You don't know what God can do to you. Eh? Your appetite for food will die. I speak of the things I know. You know, sometimes when I say food, food, stuff, people think I was born like this. No. There is what they call, when I was in primary school, there is what they call, we have two sessions in a day in primary school. The one you do in the morning, then in the afternoon, we call it lesson. I don't know what they call it here in Ghana. So, but during that lesson, they will bring afternoon food for you. What is afternoon food called now? Eh? Huh? Huh. They'll bring the lunch for you. So, my mother delayed for 15 minutes. I began to cry. Yes, that was my own story. My food did not arrive. 15 minutes, I began to cry. That's how much I love food. That's how much I love food. Until years later, I found out that too much food is incompatible with my destiny. Hey, I'm talking to somebody. The person is arguing with me. He's saying, he's saying, but, but Lord, this one is not too much. You are the one I'm talking to. Keep eating food. You will arrive 10 years later with big stomach and no destiny. I'm not against big stomach, but when you have big stomach, make sure your destiny came out alongside it. Amen. <laughs> uh, amen. Uh, listen, listen to me. I love food and I love sleep. When God became serious with me, these are the two things he told me to drop at the altar of consecration. Sleep and food. Me, my sleep. <laughs> my problem is that the night is too fast. When I sleep, I will travel in an aircraft, play football. Do my, you are doing it. I will act, finish the movie. I watch part one, I will finish it in my dream. Um, I did strong for my dream. Oh. I will be doing many things. Before you know it, it's six in the morning. They will wake us for morning devotion. I say, why is it that this night is always fast? Am I the only one? Uh -uh. You know, as if I'm saying something strange. I know I'm talking to you. I mean, you see, the re my experience is not peculiar to me. It is the weaknesses of humanity. And that is why the Holy Ghost comes. And that is why our antidote is an objective reality. It is not something that is subjective. It is something that if you open your heart to the light of the scripture, then God will now step in and begin to show you the expressions of the same thing that he's speaking. It doesn't take time. It takes an encounter. You can leave this meeting and pray for eight hours. You can if you want. You can. You can. You can leave this meeting and then you will be praying and God will create a hotspot. You know what is a hotspot? There are people that have prayer life, but there are people that have prayer life for other people. Now, people pray because they are praying. It's another layer. You know, you can pray and people, you are just a prayer person. You are just praying. But there are people, when they, they are praying, they are not even saying anything. When they are praying, you will pray. Once you see them praying, you will know. A man of God finished praying in a room and came out. Somebody now entered and visited him. He said, the person said, hmm, prayer is smelling here. There is prayer. Is smelling. <laughs> You pray it in prayer. Prayer. Your room will be sm smelling prayer and fire. Prayer and fire. That's not the kind of place you can fornicate to. You have not charged your room well. That's why they will come and tell you, your bed is fine. Oh. Your bed is fine. When fire is in the room. No, <laughs> be so. Let me tell you why. Look at it. If you bring a pot and cook a soup, if the soup is cold, what will flies do to it? They will perch. As long as the soup is hot. We are not saying that flies are not existing. But as long as the soup is what? Hot. The reason why they perch on you is because you became cold. Now, for some people, it's not as if you are cold, cold. It's not as if you are cold, cold. It's just that you are not hot enough. There are things that can survive at certain temperatures. 
certain things. It, some have gone. No, some t- if you check, some things have gone, but some remain. It's because the temperature and pressure of cooking need to be increased. Need to be increased. You need to go a much higher. Somebody told me the things he's suffering. I asked him, have you prayed? Have you fasted? He said, ah, he has been praying and fasting. No, nothing changed. I said, okay, tell me exactly what you mean by prayer and fasting and Bible study. He said, he reads, sometimes he reads, he reads one chapter and then he prays for 30 minutes and then he fasts for 6 to 12. Let me say it to your notice today. 6 to 12 is not fasting. I know you will not agree. Yeah. Tell them I said so. Because the only thing that happens is that you forgot your morning food. If somebody forgot, forgets his morning food, you forget breakfast, is that why I'm fasting? When you become serious as a businessman, you are not getting the point. I came, I'm coming from a business area of Nigeria. And I can tell you as a fact that many of them forget breakfast. Not because they want to, but because if you, if you are too interested in breakfast, you will miss when I was in the university, some lectures take place by 7 a.m. And I don't know about Ken UST, but I went to University of Nigeria and if a, a lecture is coming by 8 a.m., people have filled the hall by 6, by 5.30. If you come by 6.30 in the morning for a lecture of 8 a.m., I'm not sure it happens here, is it not? Uh-huh. That's why you don't understand. This one, you need to come to Nigeria to understand this one. New Science Lecture Theater. <laughs> People will feel there by 6.30 a.m. for a lecture of 8 a.m. If you want to attend this class, will you insist on your breakfast? It's common sense. It's common sense. I'm not saying if you want to attend lecture, this lecture that people fill the hall. In fact, by 7, you will not find standing space. Standing. I'm not saying sitting. What did I say? Standing space. There is no standing space. I'm not exaggerating. In fact, I'm not saying it enough. I'm, I'm not saying it enough. But you, you want to be one of the first. You want to be in the front row of the move of God. Yes, there are, there are rows. Oh. You want to be, you want to be in front. Those days, I didn't know that God will use me like this. But I was praying one prayer. I said, God, I don't know what you are doing. Wherever you are doing, however you are doing, I want to be in the front row. That's all I wanted. If you want to be in the front row, you will forget your breakfast for long. <laughs> it's not about... Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention to me. Pay attention. Leave that one. Leave that one. If you want to be in the front row, you will forget your breakfast. I'm not saying you are fasting. When you start fasting, we will know like three days dry that's what it means that you have started fasting <laughs> have you done three days dry before why now how did you manage to come here you try you oh. okay you have done three days dry fasting raise your hand raise your hand ah why are you people crying for revival now how will you come <laughs> hey you will see what will happen to you. You will fast. You will fast. Jesus told them I'm leaving. You will fast. Uh, uh, uh. You will fast. There is no option. All these things we are running away. We are postponing our day. We are postponing. Stop post. We are postponing. Let's, now that you are in fact, now that you are in campus, do something about your destiny. When you leave, it's not that easy. Maybe I don't know about Ghana. I think everything is, everything is easy in this Ghana. Is it not? The way I'm seeing everybody, everybody is hospitable. Look at the president. He's looking very handsome and fine. Uh, which is, uh, no, things are easy in Ghana. Things are <laughs> Everybody is looking very handsome and fine. There is nothing bad happening in Ghana. Life is very, very... That's, that's what... He, but if... If... There are demons in Ghana. If there are demons, are there demons in Ghana? <laughs> if there are demons in Ghana, you will pray and we fast. Yes. As a matter of fact, when we prayed in the spirit, 
what we saw was the activity of voodoo and cobweb. Is this nation, are they into voodoo in this nation? Huh? Hey! It took long for us to break into that barrier. Meanwhile, you, you, you will come. You will come and say, God called me. And you are sitting on that cobweb and doing ministry. On that cobweb. <laughs> the day that cobweb will be activated, including you and the people you are pastoring, you are pastoring them into darkness. The Bible said in the book of Revelation chapter 3, it said that there is a place called the headquarters of Satan. It said, the seat of Satan. Huh? The seat of Satan. There is such a place. That is where some people are doing ministry. And the Bible said that even some of them died. They were killed because of where they are doing ministry. Are you with me? If you help me, say amen. amen. 